afternoon. So we will be having a presentation uh, by uh, Dr. Amanda. And then if you have any questions, I'll be there to actually answer those questions on eFluid. So thank you. Let's uh, see the video and then we'll talk. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Amanda Eastwood, and I'm the Global Product Manager at the Driveline at Lubrizol, responsible for our electrified product line. And I'm going to talk to you today about e-fluid technology for electrified drivers. I'm going to start with a very brief market outlook before talking in more detail about next generation electrified driveline and fluid requirements. And then I'll end with a brief summary and then some uh, questions and answers. So firstly, I'd like to introduce Lubrizol, so who we are and what we do. We've been operating for, for nearly 100 years, delivering innovative specialty chemicals to solve our customers' most demanding market challenges across the world. Every day, <coughs> Lubrizol science comes into play in your life. So we provide solutions within automotive, industrial, home care and health care businesses, really providing a wide range of, of performance chemical products. I work in the automotive area, and in the automotive landscape, we provide fuels and lubricants for all passenger car and commercial vehicle types, including a range of products addressing the exciting electrical vehicle market. In fact, over 50% of cars on this planet will rely on lubricant chemistry. And we are proud to be a Berkshire Hathaway. So of a brief market outlook, we all know that electrification is here, and there's, there's varying different outlooks that, and forecasts, but in general, the thought is that by 2030, globally, more than 70% of new light duty vehicles will be hybrid or electric. And hybrids would re re represent around 34% of global production, for its battery electric vehicles, often known as full electric, where the, the outlook has, has been increasing, and it's more than doubled in the last two years, nearly tripled. And at the moment, that's forecasted to represent close to 40% of production by 2030. And the reason, the reason for that uh, increase and that, that dynamic market is the change in legislation, the tighter CO2 target, really driving government to, to look differently about their uh, the internal combustion engine. In fact, in some countries, they've even announced bans for internal combustion engines as early as 2025. So it's really, really moving at, at quite a fast pace towards electrification. And in India, almost 30% of light duty uh, vehicles will be electrified by 2030, according to some of the latest forecasts. The FAME scheme has been extended until March 2024. It's very dynamic, so electrification is quite fast moving, depending a lot on, on government legislation. And the OEMs, the, the driveline architectures, are also moving at a fast pace and different designs proliferating. There's no one solution fits all. Battery electric vehicles and hybrid electric vehicles have been around now for 10, 15 years or more. But historically, they've really relied on conventional lubricants. And some of the early designs, often the e motor was, was kind of bolted on, and there was no, no special requirements for any dedicated e fluid. But with this acceleration to electrification, a lot of designs are changing. There's new hardware configurations, there's significant modifications, new operating conditions. And for example, the e-motor might be immersed in the lubricant instead of it being uh, the, 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 you know, the e-motor not coming into contact with the lubricant at all. And this is what is driving that new need for, for e-drive line fluid technology. So it's really that next generation of transmission that are requiring the lubricants to do more than what they've done in the past. I'm really focusing on battery electric vehicles or full electric, however you want to term them. And, and light duty. And I wanted to just explain a little bit about how the, the e axles, or sometimes they're termed as, ele as electric drive units or EDUs, how, what, that, what those designs, uh, what the trends are, how those designs are evolving. 
So an, an e-axle comprises mainly of a, an e-motor, a reduction gear, and an inverter. So you can see on, on the image here, so you have the e-motor, the inverter e here, which is um, often known as the power electronics, and here are the re reducer gears. The e-motor can be water cycle cooled, so we call the dry e-motor, or it can be oil cooled, um, which is termed as wet. The e-motor converts the electrical energy to mechanical energy using magnetism, and the trends really are moving towards higher speeds, to have higher power densities, better performance. So everybody wants to have a better performance in their in their cars. And to do that, there's a, there is a shift towards a more oil cool system or wet system. Obviously, that means that the, the lubricants have interactions with the e motor. So lubricants suddenly have to have interactions with different components in the tradition they have to. The reduction gear, as you see here on, on the right, these are, are helical or planetary gears. So not, not to, typically high point, for example, so much less severe for helical or planetary gears. And their function is to reduce that high RPM coming from the E-motor into a reasonable output speed. There are, there are some trends for high-end passenger cars or commercial vehicles to move to multi-speed where friction needs to be taken care of with the lubricant, but it predominantly hours be 99% of light duty passenger cars are single speed. That can be water or glycol cooled, and that converts the DC from the battery to the AC to power the motor. The, the trend here is moving from, from to high voltages, so for example up to 800 volts or maybe even higher, and that allows the system to run cooler and be, be more efficient. And what, what happens there often is the copper wire becomes thinner and becomes thinner, and then the blue needs to take care of the uh, copper corrosion. And the reason that the designs are, are evolving for drivers for those next generations who are around high performance, um, most important is, is efficiency. So we all, we all have our concerns uh, with electric vehicles and, and the range. So really, the drivers have a longer, a longer range. Lighter weighting and smaller packages, um, again, helps efficiency if, it, if it's lighter. And of course, lower costs um, to make this, this technology more accessible. I would like to mention about the viscosity. The traditional axle oil, think of viscosity at 100 degrees C. Traditional axle oil is typically around 15 centistokes. Transmission fluids can vary between four and seven centistokes um, in general. But we're seeing with, with E fluids, those viscosities being down at four centistokes or even lower. And that's also due to this, this need for, for efficiency. So lower viscosity improves efficiency and it also benefits the heat transfer capabilities, so taking the heat out of the units. As you reduce the viscosity, it also becomes more difficult to then give the, the, to deliver the appropriate gear bearing protection. So really, it, it's about optimizing the, the chemistry so that you have the you have optimized the, the viscosity and also still have that protection that you need. So really, we find that best enabled by As I mentioned, uh, with with the, the trend to have the e motor immersed in the, in the lubricant for better efficiency. That means that the e-motor has uh, many more interactions than what the typical lubricant may have. So the lubricant still has to protect the hardware and do all the jobs that a lubricant should do, but now it also has some more key challenges. One of those are, is, is the electrical problem. And this, this depends, on, mm. as with all of them, it depends on the hardware design, duty cycle. But really suitable electrical properties, and I will touch on each of these, these um, in the presentation. And conductivity is too high, then you may risk um, shock, for example. But if it's too too low, you can have static buildup. So really, it's the optimum electrical properties for the device. Very important is protecting copper corrosion, protecting copper parts from corrosion. 
And I love the chemistries that I used in Learn to Carry in Court to be the, the absorbed chemistry that protects the, the part and harm process. So again, it's about balancing, balancing those responses quickly. There are lots of new materials in electronics, in, in electric vehicles, that there's new material compatibility to take care of. And as I mentioned, with those lower viscosities for heat transfer, heat to maintain the durability. Sometimes the, the, the motor temperatures can be, um, can be higher, and that's where the fluid requires excellent oxidation to build the insufficient pressure. For the latest generation of design, some, the hardware may require new fluid um, requirements. I mentioned about electrical properties. So really the fluid is, is best designed with the hardware. As I said, if, if the conductivity is too high, then the current could potentially leak and cause a shock hazard. But also, if it's too low, you can have the, the static buildup in there that can also cause problems. There is a general trend you can see on the graph there, um, to ATS in yellow and blue. There is a general trend for the electrical conductivity to be lower. So if you see green light, they see oxygen be fluid. So the general trend is to have a lower electrical conductivity, and it depends on how they design. But lowering that conductivity of, also increases the oil resistivity. That can enable more of a compact design. Um, obviously, these, these uh, changes require some optimization of the active chemistry. I'd like to talk about copper corrosion. Um, some vehicles, many vehicles can contain up to six kilometers of copper wire in their uh, e motors and their, their hardware. And if you have any corroded copper wires or any deposits in that e motor circuitry and the sensors, that would lead to a shorted and vehicle malfunction of it. So it's really important that we take care of the copper that's exposed in any of the any of the hardware both in the solution and the base itself. And what we found is that some of the standard tests for copper corrosion, like the ACS 130, for example, copper strip test. These are quite subjective tests and they don't always um, show the what is happening in the vehicle in regards to corrosion. There are developments of the ASTM B130, so for example, the half in, half out test, where you can see pictures here of the, um, the coupons are, are immersed in the oil, but we also take uh, care of the vapor phase. You see on the left there that um, although the, in the solution phase there's, there's no corrosion, actually in the vapor phase, so it's the current is there. So we really see seen a need for new testing methods as well and uh, with regards to copper corrosion. And one of the new test methods that has been developed at Lubrizol is the wire corrosion test. And here it's, it's a much more objective test. And the, the, there's some pictures there. The copper wire will sit um, in the fluid but also in the vapor phase as an electric current that would pass through that, um, that wire. And the wire corrosion test assesses the compatibility of that conductive wire with the lubricant in both the liquid and the vapor phase. And that's done by measuring the resistivity of those wires. So you can see in the graph the resistance on the left with time. And if you have no corrosion, there would be no change in that copper wire electrical resistance in, in the fluid or out in the vapor. And they, that's demonstrated by the green line, the e-fluid line, over a number of hours. And in fact, we've run some feed to up to a thousand hours with no change in resistance of that wire, so absolutely no corrosion resistant. In contrast to a, a GL5 fluid, which is a typical um, silver heavy loaded fluid, you can see that after quite a short time in the solution phase, uh, and the vapor phase, that wire actually corroded to such an extent that it broke. So that's where you get the, um, the break of the tenth phenols. So it's really a new test that can look more closely at what's happening with corrosion. I wanted to just uh, 
show an example of Smithy as a picture of a shooting. This is an example at Milliem, where they had motor burnout during the validation. And the lubricant was an ATS. An ATS was used in many applications, including first generation hybrid and electric vehicles. The cause of that motor burnout was really um, a short loss between the windings due to corrosion of the exposed copper. And that was caused by the fluid not being able to prevent copper corrosion at high temperatures. Interestingly, the, the ATF used in, in the uh, system had, had passed all of those standard copper tests that I've mentioned earlier. So it was quite a surprise that the um, so the solution was to change the lubricant to an evogen e-fluid, and here, when even when the there was an extension of that validation test, there was no failure. And that lubricant was selected uh, using results from the wire <coughs> the wire test, and also from uh, looking at the conductive deposit. So there were no conductive deposits on the circuit, which is another way to test the corrosion. And you can see here, here are the results for the, the e-fluid versus the, the ATF in the wire corrosion test. This was at 170 degrees, quite, a, quite high temperature. And here's a, a picture of the circuit board test. Uh, you can see a really nice, clean circuit board. Kind of example where for the next generation transmission, the next generation So also in, in, the, new, uh, in the new EP, EP machines that there are also other factors than copper to take care of. So there are new material, new materials, polymeric materials, using magnet fly insulation, wire coating, block liners and structural parts. So a lot of parts for lightweighting that mentioned before was one of the trends are moving from, from some of the traditional metal materials to plastic. And this also helps them reduce conductivity. And these e-fluids need to be compatible with this wide variety of polymeric materials. And these can include polyamide, polyemide, like polyphenol sulfide, poly uh, And the e-fluid must really prevent damage to those structural plastics throughout the lifetime of the vehicle, but also protect the plastic coatings which would otherwise be exposed to. And also heat transfer. So in the future, the e-motors are going to have increased power density. So I mentioned that the increased performance needs. And that can create some challenges for thermal management. The improved thermal properties of taking the heat away from the units will enable higher power density. And that's where the lower viscosity lubricants have better heat transfer coatings. It's really only viscosity which shifts that tail. To have that lower viscosity, the fluid then needs to be optimized so it maintains the wear, but also the foaming and aeration performance and the electrical conductivity, because electrical conductivity increases as viscosity decreases. So it's all about balancing. So e fluids really need to balance that lower viscosity with the durability and the electrical. So Lubrizol and um, Evogen technology, that's our name for our driveline technology. We're really leading the industry with customized technology to address that those tougher e environment with the latest generation hardware. But also, along with that, a new test development to evaluate e hardware under these different conditions. We have over 90 years of experience in supplying OEMs globally. We really relied on to create these novel solutions for your innovative driveline needs. And we have a broad range of e mobility solutions from inside, outside, and into the electric cars of today. So, I'd like to summarize. So, as you heard, the, the electrification market is really fast moving, dynamic, and the next generation powertrain architecture is proliferating. There's not one size fits all, and it's really important to take care of fluid design in those hardware designs. Dedicated e-fluids may be required for the next generation in hardware. And e-fluids will really differ compared to conventional fluids, which have typically been used in uh, historical uh, hybrid and battery electric vehicles. In terms of their electrical properties, material compatibility, corrosion protection, and gear and bearing protection. 
fluid performance, you could tail it to the hardware, the hardware requirements, and we've created a range of easy fluid technology which really meets the next generation hardware needs. I would like to thank you all for your attention and open up to any questions. So, thank you for your patience and uh, I would invite questions if you have anything. Yes, please. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Tanvi. So, basically, currently con conventional fluids are used in AV vehicles. So, erosion fluid can match up to the conventional grade lubricants credentials. Why there is a need of dedicated EV driveline fluid? Yeah, so this is the initiation of the vehicle uh, 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 modification in e vehicles. So there you see that the motors are outside of the gear system. So there is as such the conventional technology like ATF kind of technology is being used. But as Amanda had uh, showed in her presentation and if you, uh, what did she summarize? Dedicated fluid actually differentiate uh, in terms of electrical property, which is not there in the conventional fluid, as well as the bearing protection and the durability is very much important for the gear system. And that's how there is actually the special technology is being used uh, for electrical vehicle or electrical vehicle fluid. And that's how uh, you need to actually protect copper, so, uh, the copper specifically the copper wires being used in the motor. Uh, so that kind of a protection uh, is expected and uh, you cannot get that from the conventional technology. Even the cooling system is important, so the, the fluid viscosity, if you consider, it is much lower compared to the what uh, available with the conventional technology. So that's how the cooling efficiency is being uh, generated. So this is the differentiation between the conventional technology and uh, uh, dedicated e-fluid. Hope this answers you. Hi, uh, this is Shruti. Uh, so, yeah. uh, you talked about a very high grade E fluid. So, can you explain that what OEMs are doing right now to, uh, to you know, make, make it more uh, localized or how much they are investing in such type of fluids currently in India? Yeah, definitely they are looking for the future and accordingly as the ranges of the vehicles is going to go uh, increase, we are engaged with uh, most of the OEMs uh, uh, who are leading in this uh, uh, electrical vehicle space and uh, we are working on the e-fluid development that is what the need they have or they see in the future. So definitely it would be then uh, uh, local focus would be definitely there. Yeah. Hello, I'm Mehul Gar. Hi. I just wanted to understand like is there any technology which is emerging in the trend like for example to reduce the losses like we reduce the heat energy losses. Uh, why using fluids? Is there anything which is emerging in future where we subtract this uh, fluid and you know within the motor any new technology is coming, new inventions are coming? Is it in process or you are looking for this? Yes, so there are different chemistries are being used. So if you see that the Evogen is a brand for e-fluid but there are different uh, product platforms we have, a uh, number of series platforms we call it. So they are differentiated in terms of chemistry and accordingly the based on the need and the based on the requirement of the hardwares, we have developed those. So one can actually take care of durability, another can take care of the efficiency. So that's how we have differentiated those, those fluids. So thanks, thanks for listening to us and we are here and even the Lubrizol team is available here to discuss more if you have any questions. Thank you.